Hey everybody, Barry here again. Yesterday I got the flange done for the oil pan. Now I'm gonna change directions for today because I'm not ready for the sump yet. So I went and bought some steel. Here is what's gonna be our cross member. It's two inch inside diameter, schedule 40 pipe. It looks like 3 16th maybe? I think it is, or eighth inch, something like that. So what's gonna happen is this is gonna go across pretty much right there. Let's see if I can do this without dropping it. And that's going to take up the cavity that comes across here and it's going to serve as a lot of strength for when I move this rack ahead and got the whole back of that because pretty much right behind this brace right here is all going to go except I am going to leave the body mount where it goes up so I'll just take it skin it out right here go across skin it and take all this big chunk and fire it sway bar is coming off the rack is going to be moved basically right up over this also this big beef right here is going so i do need to strengthen it up of course and i am going to get some more steel and tie in the front of this cradle to the frame rail here same thing over here first thing i gotta do is make up some brackets so i can take this piece of steel here that's all different angles and stuff and make it one flat piece that i can cut this pipe on a perfect 90 and weld it in that way I won't have a bunch of different angles cut at the end of the pipe, try to get it all lined up and stuff. As for our steering shaft coming out of the rack and going up into the floor, I think what's gonna happen is when I move the rack ahead, I can just sort of lean it back and hopefully still hook up with the steering shaft. If not, I'll modify that. I'll use new parts so it's all very safe and won't be binding or breaking, anything like that. I don't want this to turn into too big of a job tonight, so what I'm going to do is complete this crossbar here before I go too far and start removing the rack and stuff. So we got it all up on the ramp, cleaned up. What I've got to do, and you can see by however many freaky angles are here, I'm going to come out until I get a flat edge and then triangulate it in make sure it's all boxed and then instead of trying to get my pipe to fit all these freaky angles on both sides i've got a perfectly flat edge right here perfectly flat edge right there and i can put my pipe in there and weld it and make it a lot easier on me so basically my pipe which is over here is about two and three eighths inches diameter so i'll go till it's two and a half just to have a nice round number by this being tapered this way, the farther we get away from the flange right here, the longer distance it is. I'll measure back this way until we're out about two and a half inches from the steel here out. That way we'll have a good solid surface to weld the pipe to. Got my plates welded in, just tacked for now. But hopefully now you can sort of envision what I'm getting at. What I'm gonna do now is make a piece of plate go from here across to here. That way you can see that I have a really nice flat spot to weld my pipe to. Also, I went ahead and did this side. Well, kinda of getting somewhere. I made this template and I can't believe I actually did that on my first try. Not like my first TV try, but like actually. That's kind of cool. I'm making all this at a 3 16th plate. It's gonna be the bulk of what this cradle is because of course I'm gonna be cutting out like a pile of it. So I want it to be strong. So now we can really start to visualize what I'm doing here. The pipe is gonna butt right up against this piece here and go across and maybe, no, that was a little bit different. Not a lot different, 
but a little bit. So I'll go ahead and make that one and tack that in. And then I'll cap in the top and also cap in the bottom when I'm done. I'm doing a little bit of time-lapse stuff tonight, mostly just because I'm cutting and welding and all that, but I kind of like to do this one in real time. For no other reason than just to show how much goes into this and how much I mess up. Got to try to make sure this piece isn't this way or that way so I can make a nice even cut on my pipe. Try to make sure that all the seams are correct. Ah, try not to melt my fingers off. That actually looks kind of cool. So now we can really see what we got going on. Of course, this is going to be our cross member. And that is going to go right up against like that. As for my rack, I am going to mount the rack up here. So I'll run tabs like off the pipe somewhere when I get the rack adjusted because I might have to I might have to lean the rack a little bit one way or the other. And I got some quarter inch plate that I can angle whichever way I like and then drill it, put bolts in, nuts, all that stuff, and we'll be good. I'm gonna do this alternating between, between sides. So I've got this plate tacked in. Now I'll go over and get the template cut out and do this one. Cool. Those are all tacked in. Now we can just measure how long we need it. Nice flat surface there. 21 and a quarter. Sometimes I kind of snag myself up and be like, ah, I gotta clean this place up. That's tonight. Okay, 21 and a quarter it is. I may not necessarily have had to go with pipe this big, but I want to go with something that's going to be as strong as I can get it. I don't want any chance of this binding or cracking on me. time let's see how we did let's see if my measuring tape is shorter than it's supposed to be oh a sixteenth of an inch long which I'm absolutely fine with let's see if I can smack it in I'm gonna make this cross member low I do have lots of room to either set it up 
up high and be flush with this or low and be flush with down here. I think I'm gonna go with low, mainly for the fact that I want the rack to be as far from the oil pan as possible. Oh, that's really loud. I don't want the transfer lines up here on the rack to be anywhere near the oil pan. That is a tight fit, very tight fit. You can see now why I did this. Makes it way easier. Just cut your pipe off nice and straight, nothing to it, and just weld the sucker in. Now, obviously I'm not done. I have to cap in the top and bottom, finish weld all this stuff, but I wanna get an idea of what I'm looking at here. And it's basically flush with the bottom of the K-member as it sits. We're about an inch, inch and a quarter lower than we would be, so that's good. And lots of room to make up mounting brackets all around here for the rack. Minty. I'm gonna go ahead and weld as much of this as I can before I go home for the night. Cause it's starting to get late again. You can only squeeze a couple hours in it a day. <laughs> so let's get her welded up. Alrighty, we're all welded up for tonight anyway. I still got some work to do up here. I got a mega plate to go around here, box that in. Plate to go up here, box that in. But it's looking really, really good. I'm excited how heavy it is and how thick it is. We're not down below the cross member. Lots of room for a rack to bolt on. What I'm gonna do is wherever I decide to mount the rack, I'm gonna put a plate and sort of triangulate it. Like one plate here, one plate there, weld them together, and then bolt the rack to it. Cause there's only two bolts. Like right here and right over here. So that's not too bad. Ran out of time tonight. So tomorrow or the next day, I'll get those welded in and then pull the rack out of it. Lots of thinking and lots of planning as I go. Also, I'm gonna come off of this flat spot here, come right ahead and up here and bolt onto the frame here. That way it'll be a nice span on both sides there. And if I feel the need, I'll come off of the mount right here and go up to this frame rail to basically duplicate what's going on right here, just a little bit farther ahead. I don't know if that's something I'll need to do yet, but if I do feel the need, I'll absolutely do it. So that's what we got for tonight. Another little bit of work done, chipping away at what needs to be done. As soon as I get the engine in and mount it up, I'll go ahead and uh, get the oil pan stuff started. For the oil pan, I gotta make a dipstick mount because the dipstick right now is at the back of the block and I gotta move the dipstick holder right up to the front. So I'll find a piece of pipe or something that fits a dipstick too snugly, weld it in like a bung into the oil pan, and I'll just basically put six quarts in it and mark it on the dipstick where it sits, and that's what I'll go by. Also, I have to put my turbo drain in front of the oil pan. So that's something that I'll look at when I get that on the engine, make sure that it's not gonna strike the belts or any of the pulleys or get in the way or anything like that. So there's lots and lots of plans coming up. Gotta buy some more steel, get some more parts, Nothing to it. So thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good night.